Greetings. Hi, I'm Rod the Anonymous, and this is one of my two uh, Novation Circuit Groove Boxes. In this video, I'm going to endeavor to do my best to tell you just what the hell a Groove Box is, where the hell they come from, and what the hell you can do with them. But first, you're going to get a little demonstration. Okay, so first up, what the hell is a groove box? Well, when I explain them, the people always say it's a self-contained musical instrument. In other words, everything you need is in this one little space. You don't need to hook it up to a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation. You don't need to stare at it. You don't need any special magical powers. This thing will work nicely on its own. Up next, it needs to have at least one internal sound engine. Yes, if you have a drum machine... That's got a sound engine, the drum. So technically, you have a groove box. This one has four lovely sound engines. Uh, it's got two drum sound engines, and it's got two synth engines. I usually use one synth engine as a bass synth, and then I use another one as a regular synth. And then the drum uh, parts, they do what the hell they want. But I do have some of my own samples in there, which allows me to make it pretty damn crunchy. All right, up next on the list, it needs to have a sequencer. Uh, the sequencer, you see these little lights that are flashing? And wait a minute, now they're not flashing. Or one of them's flashing. Now they're flashing again! Oh my god, uh, that's the sequencer playing the song. I have the volume down, uh, but trust me, somewhere out in the ether a song is playing. I'll stop it again so you don't get hypnotized by the little lights. Up next on the list, you need a method for inputting the notes uh, that you're going to be playing. They have to be input somehow. Uh, it's usually keys or pads that you can do it. This one, as you may have noticed, has pads. So that's how you go about doing that. Uh, you can hook a keyboard up to this through a MIDI in, and you can in, you put, input them that way if you want. Whatever, whatever gets you your jollies. And finally, uh, if you have two or more sound engines, you need to have an internal mixer. And that's because you want a way to control whether or not the drums are louder than the bass or the bass is louder than the drums or if that synth is louder than everything or if they all work well together. That's what the internal mixer is for. And this one has a mixer. So you're going to want that. Before I stumbled upon my very first group box at a punk rock flea market, yeah, that's, that's where I got mine, um, I had accidentally created one of my own. I'm one half of a musical project called Seventh Victim. And this right here, what you're looking at right now, that's our entire live synth setup. Uh, this unit has three sound engines. It's got a bass synth an FM synth, and a drum machine. Here is the mixer. And here is the sequencer. Unlike a groove box, the MIDI audio and power connections, 
Uh, these components all have to be hardwired. And here's what that looks like. And yes, that is indeed quite messy. So now you see why a groove box is much, much neater. Now we're going to talk a little bit about where the hell these things come from. The first instrument to officially, and that officially is important, be dubbed a groove box was the Roland MC-303, which was released in 1996. It had 448 dedicated dance sounds, 40 synth basses, 35 synth leads, and 33 synth pads. It also had 12 rhythm kits, and these included a TR-808, TR-909, Techno, Jungle, and House sets. It's a groove box that you'll hear on a ton of early techno tracks. Uh, today you can buy a used uh, MC-303 for less than 200 bucks. The MC-303 was followed in 1998 by the vastly superior MC-505. Now, the thing I've always heard about the 505 is that it doesn't play well with other instruments in a larger setup. So you're going to want to let it just do its own thing by itself over in the corner. Just let the 505 be the 505. A used 505 can run you anywhere from 200 to 600 bucks. There's quite a spread on that price, uh, but they are worth every penny of it. Now, the Circuit, which is what I used, made its debut in 2015, and it was the first groove box marketed by Novation. By the way, the two synth engines that are in the Circuit were derived from the Novation Mini Nova, and that came out in 2012. Now, a used Circuit will usually set you back about 200 to 250 bucks on the second-hand market, so it makes a good entry point into the world of groove boxes. Okay, so now that I've given you a rough idea of exactly what a groove box is and where they come from, I'm going to tell you what you can do with them. Or I'll be more specific. I'll tell you what I do with them, and I'll go in ascending order from the thing I use it for the least up until what I use it for the most. So for the thing I use it for the least is you can use your uh, groove box to drive or sequence other MIDI instruments. Uh, and I use this on occasions when I have a sound inside the group box that I'm using and I want to kind of thicken it up for recording. I want to have that sound and I want to have another sound over top of it that's kind of similar but adds a little bit to it. Now, the Novation circuit in this instance, uh, you can see over here, this has a MIDI in and out. I'm not showing you the right thing. Uh, here it is. MIDI in and out are over here on the circuit. I uh, don't know how well you can see those. And then what you would do is circuit uses these weird dongles, these eighth inch things. And I'm not a fan of these at all. Um, I prefer to have an actual MIDI DIN in there. But yeah, take what you can get. And you just pop that in there and then you would attach it's dark in here. Uh, then you would attach a, uh, um, a MIDI out to that. I saw a flash. I hope I didn't break something. And so that's uh, um, how that works. And I'll show you what basically is I take a sound and I'm going to play a sound for you, an internal sound, an internal bass sound. And that sound is not bad. I mean, by itself, it, it's pretty good. But then what I will do is I will take and I'll get something like my Korg Minilog XD, which, by the way, is unbeatable for attracting fingerprints and dust. It looks great, but dust and fingerprints will find it wherever it is. Well, I'll take that and then I will run the MIDI out into the Korg, make sure that the MIDI channels are correct, and then I will sequence that using the circuit. Hope that makes sense, but here's what that sound would sound like now coming from the Korg. Now, I wouldn't use this in a live situation, and that is because it gets a little messy. I'm, I'm basically going, if I start using uh, the circuit 
to drive other MIDI equipment in a live situation. I'm back where I was with the seventh victim stuff. I've got a ton of different uh, synths out there. I've got to find a way to mix everything. It, it just it just gets a little crazy, and in my opinion, it defeats the purpose of a groove box in a live situation. So I don't use it for that, but yeah, recording, yeah, I will definitely, especially since i got a Minilog, I'll definitely thicken things up a little bit. Okay, up next, what I use it for, live jams. And you saw a little demo of that earlier. Uh, the live jams are, I think, what most people are using groove boxes for, hopefully. Uh, I do a weird thing. It's a performance art thing where I portray a, a German minimalist synth player named Heinrich. It's don't, – don't see it. If you can avoid it, just avoid it. But um, – that's what I do with that, and I go out and perform, and you get to actually use all the little lovely knobs up top. And I'll show you a little chart showing what they are. These, uh, these actually adjust the parameters of the sounds. So you can, you're playing live, and that's what you saw in the video. You're seeing me adjusting those. Well, here's what those are uh, for the synths and also the drums. So when you see me tweaking stuff, that's, that's what I'm tweaking. Okay, the final thing that I use it for, I use it as a sketch pad for songwriting, and I use it for this a lot. Uh, what I will do is I will go in to the step editor, and I'll sort of step enter a drum sound. I'll step enter a drum part. I'll go in, I'll put in you know, the kick drum, and I'll step enter the snare, uh, step enter in the, uh, you know, any extra, extra, extemporaneous per, uh, percussion sounds. Those all go in, and then I've got something to start with. And then I'll usually go over and I'll just start playing around and playing bass over top of it. And it gives me an idea of what to do. And if I like what I'm doing, I hit record, and I just record everything that, that's happening there. So that's what I do with that, and it's been very helpful. It's the quickest way to get from my mind to a sound. I used to do stuff in the DAW uh, on my computer, and I would go in, okay, here's a rough idea, of, you know, uh, a drum sound that I want, and I'll play something over top of it. But then I'm looking at like 35 different plugins and everything, and it's just, this is just really immediate, and that's what I like about it. If I have an idea or I need an idea, I've got it right there, and that's how I do it. First, some, I, in my usual steps, first some drums, then some bass, and then I'll put synth over top of that. Another great thing about this is that the circuit has a scale section and it's got all sorts of scales including these weird exotic things like Ukrainian minor mode and if you put the scale, you pick a scale and then you pick the root note for that scale everything you play will be in tune. So it's not like I smacked my microphone. It's not like you're, uh, like you're going to play something and it's just going to be completely out there. Although if you pick a weird scale, I think it makes everything better. I do do some stuff in odd scales. So that is pretty much all I had to tell you about the, uh, my little introduction to groove boxes. I do want to end up with some odds and ends, if you don't mind. Uh, the first thing is there's a tool called Innovations Components, a bit of software, uh, Innovations Components. Um, if you buy a groove box secondhand, which is pretty much how you can just get them now, uh, the circuits, do yourself a favor and send Novation an uh, email. It says, hey, look, and, and take a picture of your a serial number on the group box and say, hey, I got this. Uh, I don't have the software code. Please send me the software code. You get the software code, you'll be able to go in, register your groove box, and download software for it. That includes components. So components allows you to save stuff up, and then you can move it back and forth to your um, circuit. So if I've got a song on there and I want to save it somewhere, I move it up to the uh, – um, up to components, and then I'll take it from there and save it onto my system. and Or you can also kind of save it from components straight to your system. I back everything the hell up. So, so do that. Be smart. Get that. Uh, the other thing um, is uh, the MIDI setup. Uh, you saw me driving something earlier, driving the Minilog. You want to, want, to, want to make sure that your MIDI channels are set kind of where they should be or at least know where they are. Uh, you do that by taking the circuit – and holding down shift and then firing it up. And then that will show you the MIDI, and then you can take a look and say, okay, I see that the synth, first synth one, is on MIDI track one. Uh, hopefully this is the way it's set up. Uh, synth two is on MIDI track two and so forth. You just want to do that because occasionally you, if you get a used one, somebody will go in and change the default settings, and that makes sense. They want to, they have something, a synth that's kind of hard to reconfigure, it's set up to like MIDI, you know, uh, MIDI channel six, so they'll set one to six. Yeah. So just, you want to check that out. All right. And the final thing, cause I'm going to catch hell for this and I just want to clear this up. I'm, I know I'm going to catch hell for it. I said that there were four 
synth engines within the uh, um, circuit. Uh, the, they were two synth engines and then two drum engines. Well, it's technically true. I, 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 I link them that way in my head, uh, but actually um, it's two synth engines and then really four drum engines. But the drum engines are paired. So you can control drum one and drum two. Those are all mapped out to those lovely little knobs there. And three and four, they're also mapped out. And when you go to input the drum sounds uh, into a step in a sequencer or any sequencer, um, two and four are in one area. I mean, one and two are in one area. Three and four are in the other. If you have one of these, that makes sense. I hope I didn't confuse everybody. And if you have questions and you want to see more videos about uh, group boxes, particularly about the circuit, I'd love to make them because there's a whole lot of stuff I didn't cover. I mean, I would have loved to have covered things like how you lengthen note lengths when you go in and put stuff up or change those. Uh, that would have been fun. Or how to write a song, you know, just how to get to the, the sequence area, how many, how many bars you can get in there, that sort of stuff. Maybe I'll do those in a future one. Uh, we'll see how this one plays off with everybody. Uh, if you did like it, uh, let me know. Or if you have questions, let me know, and I will uh, hopefully get back to you as soon as I can, which is hopefully pretty swift if I'm not out there making a video. All right, everybody, thank you very much uh, for your attention on this, and uh, I greatly appreciate it, and um, I'll see you in some video in the future. All right, bye.